Waymo put self-driving cars on the road for the first time in Phoenix, Arizona. And since that time, Waymo's autonomous vehicles have driven an incredible 10 million miles on public roads in the United States. So, does this major milestone bring us further along the road toward making autonomous vehicles a reality at scale? To hear more and to tell us all about it, please welcome the Chief Technology Officer for Waymo, Dmitry Dolgov. Good morning, and thank you for having me here today. I'm particularly excited to be in Toronto because the city has been the backdrop to some incredible developments in artificial intelligence, specifically deep learning. At Waymo, deep learning touches every part of our system, from how our cars perceive the world, to how they predict the actions of others around us, to how they make safe and comfortable driving decisions. So what this means is that the history of Waymo and the progress we've made on self-driving cars is very much intertwined with the discoveries that were being made just a few miles away. And while the dream of cars that drive themselves has been around for many decades as science fiction, the reality of self-driving cars, much like the advances that have been made in deep learning, is relatively new. It was just 10 years ago, in January 2009, when a group of a dozen people came together and the self-driving car project got started at Google. I was fortunate to be one of those people, and I have to say those early days were pretty amazing. A number of, um, I guess you'd call them incidents, uh, which may be apt for the name of this conference. A few problems with uh, perception or routing here and there. The house was not where the car is supposed to be. And to be clear, that was not my car. My team, Stanford, stayed out of trouble and placed second. Now, the competition was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We were super excited by the early results. And we knew the technology showed a lot of promise. But we also knew it would take a lot of time, resources, and breakthroughs to turn it into a real product people could use. And back then, there was no self-driving car industry to speak of. Fortunately, Google realized how transformative the technology could be, and our project was born. What motivated us then, and still drives me today, is the belief that self-driving cars can make our roads safer. Each year, more than 1.3 million people die on the roadways around the world. That's almost 150 deaths every hour of every day. More than two people every minute. And we know that 94% of crashes involve human error. People get drunk. They get tired, they get distracted. Self-driving cars don't. At Waymo, we like to say our goal is not to build a car. We're building the driver. Our mission is to make it safe and easy for people and things to move around. And we'll do that by being the world's most experienced driver. What's more, this technology has the potential to make transportation more accessible for everyone. In the first phase of our project in 2009, our goal was to build on these early results and learn what it would take to drive on actual public roads. So we set ourselves two major milestones. One was to drive a total of 100,000 miles in autonomous mode, which was orders of magnitude more than that 60-mile route our cars drove during the DARPA challenge. The other milestone was to drive these 10 100-mile routes in full autonomy, beginning to end with zero human intervention. You're seeing footage of some of these trips on the screen right now. To learn as much as we could about the problem as quickly as we could, we carefully selected these 10 routes to be very challenging and cover the full spectrum of driving conditions. And even with such a small team 
and the technology of 2009, we were able to make progress quickly and reach these milestones in under two years. In our second phase, we wanted to bring this technology to life. In 2015, we were able to complete the world's first fully self-driving ride. We did it in Austin, Texas, in a custom-designed vehicle that we called the Firefly. It had no steering wheel or pedals. The person you see here is our friend, Steve Mann. And what made all of this even more remarkable is that he happens to be blind. There were no police escorts, no chase vehicle, no test drivers on board, just Steve taking a ride from a doctor's office to a park. This was a historic moment. But there's an incredible amount of work involved in taking technology from a stage where something could be done once to a point where it can be repeated every day. So that's what we set out to do. And building on that single trip, we've since expanded to ongoing testing on a fleet of driverless cars. Which brings us to our third phase, taking this technology and turning it into a product. Last December, we launched our commercial service, Waymo One. And today, over 1,000 people in Metro Phoenix are using our vehicles to get around. They take them to school, to work, to run errands. We've also begun giving some members of the public a chance to experience their first truly driverless rides with no one in the driver's seat. Take a look. Getting our technology to a point where we can serve people has been incredibly valuable because now we can learn from real users. Over the last 100 years, cars have gotten faster and smarter, but the way people use them hasn't fundamentally changed. And in a world where everyone is a passenger, we've had to reimagine user experience. We've built an app to hail the vehicle, developed in-car controls and screens, and created a rider support system for when people have questions. Our user interface is designed to communi communicate just the right amount of information at the right time. To do this, we take real-time data from our sensors and software and abstract that information into what you see here. We want to anticipate when our users have questions and be proactive about letting them know what the vehicle is doing. For example, in this case, a passenger may wonder why the car has slowed down at the intersection. At a glance, they can see that we're yielding to a pedestrian. Another area where we're learning a lot from our customers is pickups and drop-offs. And having a precise understanding of where people want to go is fundamental to getting somebody from point A to point B. And users of regular ride-hailing services tell us that one of the most frustrating experiences is getting picked up or dropped off at the wrong spot. That's why user feedback from our service has been really important. Take a recent example in Phoenix where we dropped off a rider at a spot right across the road from their destination. As a pin drop on a map, the location our vehicle chose made a lot of sense. But there's one detail we didn't account for, a wall of cacti. Now, obstruction by cacti uh, might be an only an Arizona kind of issue, but our users expect us to get it right, whether it's an office park or a shopping mall. And through rider feedback, we're teaching our cars to get smarter at what makes a good pickup spot. We're leveraging walking directions from Google, Google Maps, to make better decisions and suggestions. For example, we have a good understanding of stores and store entrances. So if a user is hailing a Waymo inside a mall, we'll suggest a pickup spot at a nearby exit. We also take into account what we think is more convenient for users. For example, people are okay to cross a suburban street, but not so happy to cross a major road. So we anticipate that in choosing pickup and drop-off locations. So that's right hailing. We think it's a great way to have a lot of people try out our technology. But ultimately, we believe that self-driving vehicles can reshape transportation more broadly. That's because we're building a driver. 
And by building that safe and capable driver, we're able to deploy that driver across different commercial applications. Put another way, while ride hailing, trucking, and deliveries are different products, the fundamental challenges of building a good driver are the same. That means the tools and core ingredients we've brought together apply to all of these projects. So ride hailing is just the beginning. I see a way mode to move goods with trucking and local deliveries, a way mode to help connect people to public transportation, and a way mode to shuttle us around in our own vehicles. Now, one of the reasons we're able to build that safe and capable driver is because we designed the entire self-driving system, both hardware and software, in-house. Our tightly integrated system means we can get the most from our self-driving sensors and compute and use the power of AI and deep learning to build more capable software. Together, we're able to create a virtuous development cycle where better hardware leads to better software. And, ins and the insights from better software help make our hardware even better. Let's start with hardware. A fully self-driving car needs the right sensors to handle the roads, whether it's day or night or inclement weather. And to get a rich picture of what's around us, we use lighters, cameras, and radars. Even though these technologies have existed many years before self-driving cars, our sensors had to be reimagined to handle the unique task of self-driving and built to work seamlessly together. Our lighters work by creating millions of laser points every second to give our vehicle a 3D view of the world. Lighters are one of our most important sensors because they directly measure distance with high resolution and can operate in complete darkness. We designed a complete system of LiDAR sensors that can see 360 degrees around the vehicle, from up close all the way to three football fields away. This lets us see objects immediately around the car, like a cat dashing out in front, as well as things at long range, like construction cones on a highway. Our vision system is made up of 19 cameras and provides high-resolution color imagery all 360 degrees around the vehicle. And because our vehicles operate at all times of day and night, our cameras have high dynamic range that allows them to see in a wide variety of lighting conditions, from an unlit parking lot in the middle of the night to the blazing sun at sunset. Now, you may be wondering what's happening in this video. While our cameras may be high-tech, we use a pretty low-tech solution to make sure birds don't block our view. And that's what's being tested here, our cleaning simulated bird poop. Also on board, we have an array of radars. Our system has a 360-degree integrated field of view, letting us track objects all around our car. Unlike radar systems found in many cars today, which were designed for highway driving, our radar system is designed to handle urban conditions as well. Finally, with all of these powerful sensors, you need a powerful computer to process this large and diverse set of data in order to make real-time driving decisions with low latency. And every Waymo vehicle is a custom-designed computer. In fact, each vehicle actually has two computers. The secondary one acts as a backup for safety. Every design decision we've made has been the result of what we've learned over the last decade and through more than 10 million miles of self-driving. We know that when it comes to sensing for self-driving cars, it's not about any single sensor. With their unique strengths, each has a role to play in creating a capable and safe system. For example, lighters can see in 3D and in the dark. Cameras can see much more detail and add color to the scene. And radar can see through rain, snow, and fog. So here, the whole really is more powerful than the sum of its parts. So that's a bit about hardware. Now, on the software side, AI has been a game changer. And today, it touches every part of our system. As the revolution of deep learning and convolutional nets was getting underway around 2012, we knew that this would be a step change in performance and capability for our technology. So we began to apply deep learning to our own system. And the field has only continued to make exciting new advances. To stay at the cutting edge, we found that you need a few key ingredients. First, 
it's important to have high quality data that's targeted for learning. At Waymo, we're able to collect rich and high resolution data from all of our sensors. And this opens up some pretty exciting opportunities. The last decade has demonstrated the power of ML to learn from two dimensional images. Now, our researchers and others in the field are working to apply deep learning to a 3D world by fusing images from cameras with LiDAR point clouds and radar returns. Second, you need to train your ML models on that data. That means you need infrastructure and frameworks to store and process data efficiently at scale. For this, we use the TensorFlow ecosystem and rely on Google's powerful data center. And third, you need to invest in discovering new high-quality ML models. We have active research in a number of promising areas, from supervised ML to imitation and reinforcement learning. And what's more, we also have the benefit of expertise and collaborations with Google. And with these ingredients of modern AI, we can tackle some of the most difficult driving challenges in the key areas of perception, prediction, and planning. Because it's not just about detecting objects and not bumping into them. At its core, driving is a social task. So we need machine learning to give our system a deep semantic understanding of the world. For perception, this means giving our system the capability to understand context. We call this scene level understanding. Take a look at this. Four stop signs. Sure, we can detect each one, but what does each one actually mean, and how should it affect our behavior? In the top left corner, we understand that it controls the four-way intersection and requires our vehicle to stop before proceeding. In the second below, we also have to recognize that the stop sign is on a school bus and behave accordingly. On the top right, the crossing guard has her sign up, but she's leaving the intersection. And the last one is a particularly rare situation where the right thing to do is to actually ignore the stop sign altogether. For prediction, at a basic level, we can do that by understanding the rules of the road and the speed and direction of different users. But that's not enough. We also need to understand how different objects on the road interact with one another. In this example, we're able to understand how a parked car up ahead may affect the behavior of others. From that, we're able to anticipate well in advance that the cyclists will, want, will want to merge into our lane. And deep nets are letting us interpret more nuance in the road than ever before. We can use contextual information, like the relative position of one road user to another, as well as many other signals, such as subtle changes in speed, to make more accurate predictions of what others will do next. Now planning. In highly interactive driving situations like merges, Prediction and planning go hand in hand. And what makes the previous example a good illustration is that slowing down was not our vehicle's only option. As we approached the parked car, there are actually a number of potential moves our car could have made. It could have sped up to pass ahead of the cyclists, slowed down to let them in, or changed lanes to avoid them altogether. Now, in this situation, changing lanes might have been a good action. But there's actually a fast-moving car approaching from behind. And at that distance and relative speeds, that driver would probably not be too happy to being cut off. And the right driving decision depends on the specifics of each situation. And getting it right requires a deep understanding of the social conventions of driving and the expectations of others in the scene, which, of course, can change at any moment. And since this, uh, these social interactions are not bound by simple rules, deep learning is showing a lot of promise in this area as well. It allows us to observe and capture the fine nuances of what constitutes good driving behavior, helping us build a safe, smooth, and predictable driver. Whether it's being polite and considerate to two dogs on a midnight run, avoiding a runner darting in front of a vehicle chasing her dog, maintaining calm, in the hectic traffic of San Francisco, or being the crossing guard and policeman in a school zone. With our 10 million miles of real-world experience and billions of miles of simulated driving, as well as powerful AI algorithms, we're building a driver to handle all types of rare and complex situations. As you can see, it's an incredibly complex problem. And it requires the right tools and technical ingredients 
informed by testing and insights from our real users. And with the start of our ride hailing service, we're pooling all of these pieces together for the first time. What we're building now has been developed with scale in mind. We're laying foundations and moving purposefully with the goal to bring our technology to more people in more cities around the world. Thank you.